camera. Action! <laughs> Et d'abord, quelques faits, puisque la vérité est parmi eux. He was the son of a Swiss businessman who uh, went to Paris disgusted with the kind of bourgeois constrained life of Roll and you know the outskirts of Geneva um, and went and joined the cine clubs and soon met the key individuals who were going to make the French Cinémathèque into the most important institution in France at, the, at that moment. On allait souvent au cinéma. L'écran s'éclairait et on frémissait. He obsessively watches um, the right kind of American movies, maybe noirs and, and, and cheap westerns and so on, um, and writes about them very brilliantly in, in Cahiers de Cinéma, which is a, a new publication in Paris. On était triste. Ce n'était pas le film dont nous avions rêvé. Ce n'était pas ce film total que chacun parmi nous portait en soi. Ce film qu'on aurait voulu faire, ou plus secrètement sans doute, que nous aurions voulu vivre. My name is Jean-Michel Frodon and I am uh, uh, editor-in-chief of uh, Cahiers du Cinéma. Godard used to say that he and the other guy from Cahiers became critics making films with a pen because they couldn't make films with a camera during the 50s. André Bazin created in 1951 Cahiers du Cinéma. There are many, many levels of influence from Bazin's theories on Godard. <laughs> Directing is an ethical issue. The way you use a camera, the way you use a frame, the way you use the relation between sound and image, the way you use editing is an ethical issue and not a technical or not even an aesthetical issue to start with. Pourquoi vous me regardez? Je ne suis pas un étrange animal, je suis un être humain. Cinema is based on recording reality and that there is no separation between fiction and documentary because whatever it is, it is based on recording the real world with the camera and with the mic. The only point about cinema is do you believe it? There's no other point in cinema. La photographie c'est la vérité. Et le cinéma c'est 24 fois la vérité par seconde. When I watch all my BAFTA tapes, I watch one film after another, they're all beautifully crafted. I can use other adjectives, but the point is I don't believe a word of any of it. So that is a disadvantage in cinema. Um, so every time a youthful movement comes into cinema, they have to say, well, actually, by the way, I don't believe this. And Bazin telling them when all the film studios in Rome were destroyed, Rossellini had to make a new cinema out of the reality of the streets, then a complete unwillingness to compromise. That's the same impulse which Godard represents inside the new wave. He is the first European filmmaker who is relaxed about the idea that ordinary Europeans have the identities of American film stars running through their minds as they walk down the street. And therefore, he can make films about Europe which are more real than those people who ignore the fact that we're attached to American culture. Whenever I hear the word culture, I bring out my checkbook. Come here. The American cinema was uh, much more lively and much more direct and much more cinematic than the old French cinema which has always seemed to, be, to him to be based on either the theatre or literature. We never thought, until the French went on and on about them, that the old hacks of Hollywood were actually sort of auteurs, capable of making much more than just factory films. Truffaut adored Hitchcock. For Godard, it was people like Fritz Lang, Sam Fuller. The Odyssey, 701, take three. In a way, Goddard is a chameleon. You never know what he's going to do next. He was capable of making films in all sorts of different styles and mixing those styles up. Breathless is a typical example. You know, doing something completely fresh, but based on uh, other things that he'd seen. He goes to see Touch of Evil, um, and then uh, uh, he immediately thinks, OK, I'm going to make an urban crime thriller myself. Um, and he gets various people together, including Truffaut and others who help him to get a little bit of money together, and he makes a bout de souffle. A film de Jean-Luc Godard, avec Jean Seberg and Jean-Paul Belmondo. Which has then got an actress discovered by Preminger, who he loves from the American cinema, Belmondo, who is kind of doing something about his own love of Bogart. Si vous n'aimez pas la mer, si vous n'aimez pas la montagne, 
Si vous n'aimez pas la ville, allez vous faire foutre. It was very exciting seeing Breathless, not being a macho sort of a person, um, although I wouldn't have minded giving Gene Seberg one. I never walked around doing that, <laughs> smoking gitans, thinking I was Belmondo. I mean, I did come out of many a Lawton film thinking I was Charles Lawton, but that's not the same thing, you know. La jolie fille, le vilain garçon, le revolver, La mort, les anarchistes, le diable au corps, du rififi chez les hommes, et Dieu créa la femme, Scarface, à bout de souffle. Le meilleur film actuel. New York Herald Tribune there's that incredible sense of the reality of those people and their everyday lives. And in the midst of that, a highly coded and romanticized sense of the, the way in which human relations are conducted in cinema. Mr. Laurent, there's no horoscope. What's the horoscope? The horoscope is the future. I want to know the future, not you. I see. And a very adolescent sense, let's be honest, of the way in which, you know, beautiful women will betray you, so you might as well shoot yourself anyway before it all happens. And all kinds of things which are kind of cheesy, in a way, in that film, but uh, in their own context are quite wonderful. Qu'est-ce que c'est des glaces? The word is that it was simply way over length. And the only way that Godard could think of to tackle the problem without losing the substance of the, of the film was to invent the jump cuts <laughs> and thus condense it. Je trouve que les Parisiennes ont des robes trop cool. Ça fait poule. Allez, je t'en prie. On a envie de courir derrière et de leur faire comme ça. Ne te gêne surtout pas. Stop it là. The way the film was shot and the speed at which it was shot, it's 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 a bit like Night of the Living Dead. It defines the film. You can't have the film without that lack of resources and without that, that sense of speed. The whole notion that you could get out there on the street and capture the street and capture it spontaneously so it wouldn't look like something in a movie was, um, you know, certainly what redefined what a movie was. His women were sort of icons of their day. There's no question of that. Everybody wanted to be in a Goddard film at one period. Now everybody would, would um, run a mile. Elle, c'est Marina Vladi. Elle est actrice. He shot them marvelously. He dealt with them pretty roughly, I believe, on the set. But he got marvelous performances from them. He used Anna Karina because she was not only because, of, because he loved her at the time, but because she was a great actress. Hasta luego. A tout de suite. I guess he saw me in one of the publicities at that time, showing before the film began. Il n'est pas comme les autres. So I was asked to go and see him, uh, which I did, and uh, he said, well, it's for a little part. In my first film, it's called Breathless, a bit soft. You're playing the girl, she's taking her clothes off. So I said, oh, no, no, I don't take my clothes off. <laughs> they said, well, I've seen you in the bathtub and all that. I said, yes, but in the bathtub, you, don't, you only see a little shoulder and a little leg like this. And I was saying, you know, I was not new, nude in the, in the picture. And so I left. Some months later, I got another telegram. Would you please come and meet uh, Mr. Jean Le Godard? This time it might be for the first part. So we did a little soldier, political film, and we went to, to shoot it in Switzerland. You can see very well at the beginning of the film how much filming the face of the woman he loves is giving him strength, is giving him energy. There is no storytelling in the regular sense, but there is a lot of uh, emotion. Et depuis que vous êtes à Genève, beaucoup de garçons vous font la cour? Oui. Pourquoi? Non, pour savoir. Mm -hmm. 
on a Sunday, we're all invited to Lausanne. We're sitting there at this table, you know, having dinner. And Jean-Luc was sitting in front of me like you're sitting right now. And, and suddenly I feel that somebody wants to give me something under the table. I knew that my boyfriend got the, the hunch, you know, about something was going on with this piece of paper. So Jean-Luc, he left right away, you know. So I still got this piece of paper in my hand. So I went to the other room, you know, and I read the paper. And on the paper was written, I love you, rendezvous at midnight in Café de la Paix in Geneva. My boyfriend takes the paper and, and reads it too and said, I suppose you're not going, he says. And I said, yes, I am. Because I was in love too, but nobody wanted to know it. this has been going on for three months. I mean, you know, looks and all that. And I went by foot over the bridge to the old town and to, to the Café de la Paix. And Jean-Luc was sitting with a, a newspaper like this. And uh, so as I come into the café and uh, I go straight to him and it seemed to me like hours before he looked at me and then he said oh here you are let's go and that's how we met for real i mean they lived together they got married uh, and uh, they would separate by the end of, of the 60s so the few films they made together there was this kind of uh, vibration which happens when there is this relation between a director and somebody he, he loves. À quoi vous pensez? Rien. Je pense que si existe. Elle s'en va. Of course, I loved the first time I saw Jean-Paul Belmondo and and Jean-Claude Puyalli on the set. And a woman is a woman. My niece was going like this because I was so nervous. Bon, voilà. Et tu d'accord de faire un enfant à mademoiselle que voilà Qu'est-ce que c'est Une tragédie ou une comédie Avec les femmes, on sait jamais. It was too much, you know. It's like uh, being with two great actors like this. But they were so sweet and so funny. Why do we go? Parce que, Angela, tu es infâme. Moi Je ne suis pas infâme. Je suis une femme. Well, vive sa vie, from the point of view of understanding what choices you can make without showing everything, making definite aesthetic choices in independent film. Vive sa vie is just a kind of a touchstone film, I think, for every independent filmmaker, and they have to see it. I think it's a very touching character because it's a matter of fact that when the film came out, there was a prostitute who came to me and said, I just saw the film, that's the best film I've ever seen about uh, a girl uh, becoming a prostitute. I think it's a very beautiful film, by the way, and it really, really explains how, how it all happens. To she liked very much the, the film um, Jeanne d'Arc de Dreyer. He always took me to the Cinematheque, so I had seen the film, and I remember Falconetti when she was crying. When I'm crying in the movie house, you can understand that there was nothing on the screen. So I said to myself, well, I will think about this image. It was all fun to make, like, you know, when you're dancing in the Madison in uh, Pont de Pas, The Outsiders. They always say, Jean-Luc, he doesn't rehearse, we don't have time to do so and so. It's not true, we rehearse that scene for three weeks in a nightclub, every night. Because the Sammy Frey and uh, Claude Brassard didn't know how to dance. Jean-Luc is a very strange character. We all know that. He would go away, you know, like he would say, I'm going to buy some cigarettes. 
and then he would uh, not come back for three weeks. He went to Italy to see Rossellini, or if he went to Sweden to see Bergman. I guess I was too young to understand that too, to be abandoned like that all the time. You know? but the most I saw him was in the movie sets. C'est notre histoire. Un peintre qui fait le portrait de sa femme. Tu veux que je continue? Oui. Sometimes, of course, when I was sad, I would hide away and cry a lot, but I wouldn't show it. We understood each other in the artistic way, I guess, yes. Much more than, than in the human way, I guess. Is that pretentious to say that, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> That's what I think of that stuff up there, Fritz. You cheated me, Fritz. That's not what is in that script. He never wrote the script, you know. He would write the dialogues in the morning, and sometimes we had the dialogues 20 minutes before we would start to rehearse. We were really allowed to rehearse a lot. You never know which wrong you to do. <laughs> you just have to follow, you know, and to understand. Vous avez dû faire. Oui, j'ai fait 9000 km pour vous installer. I remember when he did Alphaville, he would go to London to check out the, the new um, pellicule. He would uh, stay there for, for a few months, really, to, to study about it, to know about it. Il n'y a jamais quelqu'un qui tombe amoureux de vous. Amoureux? Qu'est-ce que c'est? With this uh, very sensitive film, uh, every, you can see everything. It, it's very, uh, I think it's very beautiful in a way. Le regard, la parole, et le fait que je t'aime. Alphaville it defines low budget genre films for a generation afterwards. He's not afraid to make uh, an urban science fiction film, which is about what's said on the soundtrack and the way he manipulates, you know, small spaces and buildings and low lighting and all of that. So in a way, there's a huge inventiveness about it. And the young people love pure food. It's an old film, of course, but it's not to those people. Because the spirit is very young. Pourquoi t'as l'air triste? Parce que tu me parles avec tes mots. Que moi je te regarde avec tes sentiments. Vous voyez, elle pense qu'à rigoler. À qui tu parles? Spectateur. I worked a lot with uh, with Jean Luc, who gave me really uh, great parts. It was like gifts because uh, it, they were so different all the time. Tu me quitteras jamais? Mais non, bien sûr. Bien sûr. Oui. Bien sûr. We did seven and a half pictures together and uh, it was really like presence. Really like presence. Vous soyez presque plus. Je ne sais pas si je l'aime encore après tout. Mais j'avais dû te voir envers lui à cause de cet amour. Between Jean-Luc and me, it was a big love story. Too. And that nobody can take away from me. You know? I don't know how he feels about it today. But uh, I, it's something that nobody can take away from me, never. Allez, dis pas ça. Il y a deux minutes, je voyais la mort partout, maintenant c'est le contraire. Regarde. La mer, les vagues, le ciel. Ah, la vie est peut-être triste, mais elle est toujours belle. If you want to talk to students about creating a relationship with sound, between sound and image, which is genuinely dynamic, and then actually impacts on the meaning of the work, then you can't do that without God. There's, there's no other way to begin. I think the other thing is also the need to innovate. There aren't many filmmakers who are adopting an attitude to the world in terms of the number of times they need to be born. 
that Miles Davis adopted or that Picasso adopted. And I think that makes him an incredibly precious individual from the point of view of his willingness to be very unpopular while he's inventing himself. D'ailleurs, j'ai remarqué ça au cinéma. On fait presque toujours exactement le contraire de ce que l'on avait d'abord prévu. Et puis, finalement, ça ressemble quand même à ce qu'on avait imaginé au départ. Qu'est-ce que c'est pour vous le centre du monde Le centre du monde Oui. C'est drôle, je veux dire, on ne s'est jamais parlé. La première fois qu'on se parle, vous me posez des questions étonnantes. Mon Dieu, pourquoi m'avez-vous abandonné Parce que je n'existe pas. Écou, radio Pékin. I think Godard's Maoism, I mean the Godard Goran period, um, and the Chinois and so on, in retrospect, does damage to the value of some of the things in the rest of the work. It's like the end of weekend. I love the beginning of weekend. The end of weekend where they're all hanging around in the mud and all talking about Marx, Engels and Lenin as fast as they can and Johnny Guitar in the same sentence. In a way, just has this adolescent thing like, isn't, isn't Mao Zedong cool? <laughs> Vous préférez être baisé par Mao ou par Johnson Par Johnson, évidemment. Allez, Jean, t'as pas fils I think there is a sense uh, that he is a libertarian artist um, and he, he does liberate real ideas about real people. So I think he's an authentic radical. Aujourd'hui, où les révolutions sont impossibles, où des guerres sanglantes me menacent, où le capitalisme n'est plus très sûr de ses droits et la classe ouvrière en recule, Mais si par hasard les choses redeviennent nettes, ce ne peut être qu'avec l'apparition de la conscience. Ensuite, tout s'enchaîne. After that, he became more and more and more in his own small corner, making his films for himself and hoping that uh, they would get some kind of distribution. But it's a sad thing that even in France, nobody goes to see Godard now. But he remained an incredibly good filmmaker, even if he was uh, getting more radical and more experimental by the minute, and not at all interested in even American narrative now. What Godard gave to the cinema world is certainly an incredible amount of tools to think about the process of cinema making. A great filmmaker now, I realize, because not only does he make his films with tremendous fluency, and tremendous assurance, even if you don't understand a word of them, as a lot of people don't now. But somehow uh, he's traversed everything in the cinema and, and made it fresh. That's what you can say about Goddard. The auto theory has been sort of rather attacked now as being absurd, and that in fact there are many other people who contribute to the personality of a film. You can't actually say that of a Goddard film. You have to say, that his personality is there in every frame. Although Godard was, and indeed remains, as mad as a March Hare, and some of what he eventually did was impenetrable to a point of obscurity, or do I mean obscure to a point of impenetrability, nevertheless, there were some amazing things that um, came out of his uh, head and his work, which I think are much to be celebrated. Godard is a major influence on all of us, he's there, but it would be wrong to allow Godard to be the single great uh, saint of creative film. And the great thing is that you can, the technology is there for anybody to take those tools and get out there into the street and be very extraordinary with them. <laughs>